This is part 5, 1 Thessalonians 3, 1 to 5, and we come now to verse 5, which raises a very troubling question about whether the gospel can be preached in vain to someone who is elect, that is chosen by God before the foundation of the world. So let's pick it up here. When we were with you, we kept telling you beforehand that we were to suffer affliction just as it has come to pass, and just as you know. So since the affliction has finally come, he says, for this reason, since I've heard that the affliction has intensified and has come, when I could bear it no longer, I sent to learn about your faith, lest somehow the tempter, Satan, had tempted you and our labor, our gospel labor would be in vain. In other words, you wouldn't be saved. You wouldn't be part of the family of God. You wouldn't have eternal life. We would have labored in vain. So, Father, as we try to understand how and when the gospel preached sometimes comes in vain and how it relates to election, being chosen before the foundation of the world for eternal life. Show us, I pray, how this fits together, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. It really is true that Paul repeatedly held out the possibility that his ministry in different places could be in vain. For example, 2 Corinthians, I wish you would bear with me in a little foolishness, do bear with me, for I feel a divine jealousy for you since I betrothed you uh, to one husband to present you as a pure bride to Christ. But I'm afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by his cunning, your thoughts will be led astray from a sincere and pure devotion to Christ. That's a real possibility that he was concerned about. Or here it is again in 1 Corinthians 15. Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel which I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, by which you are being saved, if you hold the word preached to you, hold fast the word preached to you, unless you believed in vain. It really is possible that this this, uh, belief here, where is it, in which you stand, by which you are being saved, if you hold fast, that holding fast and believed could be bogus. They were only holding fast temporarily, and they were only believing superficially. They they weren't really saved, and it was all in vain. That's what Paul is concerned about here, is that the time he spent there ministering in Thessalonica would prove to abort, and that the gospel wouldn't, in fact, have taken root and brought them to a full saving faith. Here's the problem. In chapter 1, it says, We know, brothers, loved by God, that he has chosen you. They are among the elect. God has chosen you because our gospel came to you not only in word, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. You know what kind of men we prove to be among you for your sake, and you became imitators of us and of the Lord. You receive the word in much affliction with joy in the Holy Spirit. He is sure that they are elect. So, is he unsure in chapter 3 that the elect are going to persevere and be saved? Here's what election means. Ephesians 1, he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him in love. He predestined, so he predestined the the chosen ones. He predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace. And then he says in Romans 8.30, those whom he predestined, those whom he predestined, he called, and those we called, he justified, and those we justified, he glorified. No dropouts. This is our security, often called eternal security. Better, perhaps, 
the perseverance of the saints, because they must persevere in faith, but God will keep them. Everybody he elects, he predestines. Everybody he predestines, he calls. Everybody he calls, he justifies. Everybody he justifies, he glorifies. God holds on to his people. Those whom he calls, he keeps. They are, we are, secure. That's why Paul says about those who make shipwreck of their faith, this in 1 John 2.19, they went out from us, but they were not of us. In other words, they weren't truly born again, for if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. Those who are truly elect and born of God persevere. But they went out that it might become plain that they were not of us. And Paul wanted to know, is that what happened in in Thessalonica? Have I preached in vain? Have they gone out and proved that they were really not of us? And here at the end of 1 Thessalonians, we know Paul thinks this way about his security because he says, now may God, the God of peace himself, sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus. May you be kept. May you be kept. God who calls you is faithful. He'll do it. Those whom he calls, he justifies. Those whom he justifies, he keeps and glorifies. Nobody's going to be lost if they are truly born of God. So, if we go back here and ask, all right, if Paul is saying, I'm very uncertain about you, I am concerned that the tempter has tempted you and our labor is in vain, how can he say that if at the same time he is saying, He who called you is faithful, he'll do it, you'll be kept, the elect are always kept. And the answer is that in the next verse from 3.5, namely 3.6, it says, But now Timothy has come to us from you. So I sent Timothy to you because I was so worried about your not being truly Christians and making shipwreck of everything I thought I saw in you. Now Timothy has come to us and has brought us the good news of your faith and your love, and reported that you always remember us kindly and long to see us as we long to see you. For this reason, brothers, in all our distress and affliction, we are comforted about you through your faith. In other words, we're not worried anymore, which means, and it's obvious, that When he said this, it was before when he said that he's worried and isn't sure whether he labored in vain. That's before he got word back from Timothy, and the letter was written, including chapter 1, verses 4 through 6. This was written after Timothy came with the good report. You see, In other words, when he says at the beginning, we tend to think that uh, the the letter flows, uh, and then Timothy goes, and then he comes back as though Paul wrote this before Timothy left and came back with his news. But that's not the case. The whole letter was written after Timothy returned with good news. So when Paul says, we know, brothers, loved by God, that he's chosen you, Because our gospel came to you not only in word, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit. And you, in affliction, rejoiced in the Holy Spirit. He's saying, and now, because I'm writing in the glow of Timothy's report that this was not temporary. This was not temporary. You've gone through all these afflictions. Time has passed. And what I saw at the beginning really is true. And I am sure that he has chosen you. So I don't think there's any contradiction between God's, um, between Paul's prior concern that he might have labored in vain and his subsequent confidence 
because of Timothy's arrival, which is narrated in verse 6, to confirm, no, it wasn't in vain. They are proving to be elect of God. And, and if it sounds odd to you that Paul would write letters, that he would pray, that he would be concerned when he believes in election, consider in closing this remarkable verse from 2 Timothy. I endure everything for the sake of the elect in order that they may obtain salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. If you think that election and predestination mean that our salvation is automatic with nobody enduring anything to bring the gospel to us, to exhort us, to encourage us, to send a Timothy to us, to speak into our lives day in and day out, like it says in Hebrews 3.13, you don't rightly understand election. God has chosen a people, but he saves them through apostles who endure everything. They endure sleepless nights. They endure worry. They endure frustration. They endure persecution, and so do we. We serve each other. And a provocative way to say it perhaps is, Eternal security is a community project.